looking to snap this losing streak. Jackets have lost seven of eight. Syracuse trying to keep the momentum rolling from Tuesday, and off we go from the ATL. Each team won on the other's home court a year ago by a large margin. Loose ball poked away. Officials look at each other and say, Cuse ball, 10 on the shot clock. I mean, that's one of the things for Georgia Tech. You're going to have to have active hands against the, the Syracuse guards because they're going to want to put a lot of pressure to get to the lane. Got to stay in front of the guys and not allow them to have blow bys. Shot clock down to three. Judah Mintz recognizes and banks it in around the rim off the glass for three. But one of the things we talked about in the open is this a guy that you can give the ball to that can just go get you a bucket. You saw the off balance bank three. And the foot was on the line. So it's a two for Cuse. And at the other end, some contact. And the foul's going on Taylor. I mean, look at the off balance shot. I mean, yeah, it was a two, but I mean, you got to give him three for that one because again, Judah Menz, he was actually surprised at that by not. But none against the current top four in the league. So I know after Tuesday that Syracuse fans have started to imagine what could be if they go five and one or even six and oh down the stretch. I think that what it is, they've got to finish out strong, and then you've got to go into the ACC tournament and at least get a, a couple of wins. And I feel like especially with the way the other teams above you are playing and what the league is being projected as. Two for two for Dongo. Justin Taylor airmails one. And it's Georgia Tech ball. Evan, you'll see Georgia Tech mix up their defense. The first time they started out with a man-to-man, -man, last possession in the zone. You're going to have to mix it up against Syracuse again. Give them different looks. Make them have to work some time on the clock. Nate George, too strong off the glass. Rebound, pinballs to Mintz. It's curious what the Orange were coming out in defensively, Brian, because they played a lot of zone against Carolina on Tuesday. And a man through the first 90 seconds tonight. J.J. Starling creates contact. It's a the three ACC wins that they have, as you see Starling come up short on that one, are against Carolina, Duke, and Clemson. And so I think that when we talk to Damon Stoudemire, it's the, the frustration is that there are a lot of games, maybe six games that this Georgia Tech team had, and they were up, but then they take their foot off the pedal. The other thing that we may not discuss enough, Ryan, is how difficult it is to be successful in year one. You know, it's not all Hubert Davis taking the Tar Heels to the national final. Bobby Kremens, in his first year as the head coach on the flats, was 3-11 and 11 in ACC play. That's exactly what Georgia Tech's record is now. And one of the things, too, as you see this play, Georgia Tech, is those live ball turnovers against the Syracuse team. You cannot turn it over and allow them to get in transition because that's where they do a lot of their damage. Mintz before the shot. And they got the foul on George. Judah Mintz is going to put a lot of pressure on the guards from Georgia Tech today because this is a guy that's got bounce. He, he tries to search for the, the contact, and he puts a lot of pressure trying to get downhill. Taylor inside, surrounded, kicks it out. Starling for three. Yeah, good, pay, good pass by Taylor. Realized he didn't have anything, gets the ball out to Starling. How good have J.J. Starling been as of late? Again, we talked to Adrian Altry. He said that he thought that he was the guy that was really coming into his own. Double figures in nine straight games, a stretch in which he's averaging almost 20 a game. Pretty good rebounder, too, for his size. And with Starling and Mintz playing confidently and cohesively, Syracuse is dangerous against anybody as Taylor misfires from three. Oasi Reeves, the Florida transfer. Streaky shooter. You could say the same about Miles Kelly. Reeves pulls up over Starling. Rims out. Georgia Tech started this game 0 for 4 from the floor. And the thing is, if it's not turnovers, it's tough twos. You see Gabari come over with the block. But Starling in the corner in the right spot to knock down the three. You see Syracuse on a 7-0 run right now. A lot of that is... The perimeter guys from Syracuse coming out, being able to make Georgia Tech pay. 
Starling two for two from beyond the arc in the opening three and a half minutes. George found an open shot, unable to connect. That's one the Jackets need. That pass was off the backboard. It's like a Globetrotters event here. Starling, he checked. Kapari rebounds. George on the drive to the corner for Kelly for three. Hey, good recognition by Nathan George. Got down there, didn't force up a shot, realized he had Miles Kelly right in the corner. And that's what Georgia Tech has to do. They've got to be able to break Syracuse down, get to their second and third options. Twelve to shoot. Starling gives it back to Taylor, who discovers Mintz. Judah left all alone. Not sure that was how Damon Stadermeyer wanted to play defense there, but it worked out okay. George again is, is getting into the paint, Brian. He's been able to maneuver himself to create some penetration. And that's one of the things that's going to pay off for them. You see Kelly, but another that comes up short. Long rebound track by Kowasi Reeves, Jr. And the foul's going on Bell. That's his first and allows everybody to catch their breath. J.J. Stark basically talk about what he's done, not only from Georgia Tech, but just the dynasty that he's had a hand in. I mean, how many games that has he won for that Chiefs team? Wow. He accounted for 13 of the 25 points this past Sunday in Vegas. Wow. That's you think amazing. about it like that. That is, that is what I call a gig. Including the 57-yarder longest field goal in Super Bowl history. Tie up, aggression being unloaded. Dongo and Brown. Yeah, prior to the message. Prior to the tie up, Dongo got a chance to get a little glass. And you see both guys fighting over for it. And you know, your coaches, you like to see your guys. This is, these are the 50-50 balls. You want to see your guys get down there and scrap for it. Arrow belongs to Georgia Tech after Cuse won the tip. Georgia didn't have anywhere to go, and Jack could turn it over, but then Kelly pokes it away from Taylor. Start of it, end of the game, and Georgia Tech ball. You see, Evan, we've talked about Georgia Tech and when they have these, these scoring droughts. A lot of times, they don't stick to the script. You got to get down to your second. You cannot always take the first option that's in front of you. We've seen them already have some costly turnovers and not getting good shot quality. You have to make sure you run your sets. This is a Syracuse team. You see a good pass down to the Kyle Sturdivant right there. But also, you got to come up and make shots. Bell tracks down the rebound. Yeah, making shots has been the tricky part. Georgia Tech one for nine. Quadir Copeland's in the game. How good was he doing so many little things against the Tar Heels on Tuesday? Chris Bell comes up short. Dongo grabs another rebound. It's his third. Sturdivant penetrates in the lane. Kickout pass was deflected. Still found its way to Kelly. Copeland and, making an impact defensively and, again. And that's where Copeland is at his best. You see Look at the it. finish. Oh, my God. You see Malik Brown, the dump off and the finish. That was an orange tsunami making its way down the floor. Five on nothing, it looked like. Malik Brown's first deuce. Third of it, open. Buries it. Hey, good recognition by Miles Kelly. Realized that Kyle Sturdivant was wide open. And again, for Georgia Tech, ball movement. You have to get down to your multiple options. Georgia Tech, two of three from deep. 0 for seven from inside the arc. What does that say to you? Well, it says to me that they're getting the uncontested shots. And then what they're doing is they're staying in the game because of their defense. Doing a good job of limiting Syracuse from getting the paint. Sturdivant finds the open man, and Dongo lays it in. But here's the thing, too. You see Georgia Tech get the stops, and they're getting out in transition. They may not be getting fast breaks, but they're getting early offense. We've seen them be able to get good defense and turn it in some early opportunities on the fast break. Jackets back within one. Mintz 
playing through the contact and scores regardless. I mean, I mean that, those are pro moves. When you watch Judah Mintz and his ability to score the ball, he will not allow you to speed him up. He's able to get wherever he wants, whenever he wants. Now 14 points shy of 1,000, just his second year at Syracuse. I'm going to wave off the basket. Fouls on the floor. Against Malik Brown. And now here's the thing for Georgia Tech. You talked earlier about Nathan George. He has been able to use that pick and roll to turn the corner and get whenever he wants to the paint. Adrian Autry going a little bit deeper into his bench in the first half. Kyle Cuff Jr. has not played the last three games for the Orange, is in for the first time in a couple weeks. Number zero, the guard from Harlem, transferred from Kansas. He dealt with a tough knee injury. Brown rebounds the tournament miss. You see Syracuse mixing up their coverages, dropping back into a zone there. Quad Deer Copeland. <laughs> Kelly finds Claude. Met perfectly at the rim by Bell and the Orange. We'll take over. Hey, great defense and rotation by Chris Bell. What looked like it was going to be a wide open layup. Bell, good rotation. Stayed solid by going straight up and vertical. It was fun chatting with Red Autry before the game. You and Red go back a long, long way, Brian. We do. We go back. Uh, I remember being a counselor at what used to be the ABCD camp up in Jersey. And uh, being a, from going into my senior season, Red was an upcoming senior in high school. You were four years ahead of him. And then you had a huge senior year, and he was like, I know that guy. <laughs> uh, he, was a, he was a great player. I don't think that got enough credit for the type of player what he was. You see another pass. Tyshawn Claude able to finish. But here's the thing is that you are seeing Georgia Tech. They're using their pace. Getting the stop, getting that early offense, and their bigs are running right towards the rim. Georgia Tech jobs, uh, guards doing a good job of finding them. Shot clock at 12. Syracuse wanted a ball screen. Copeland floats it inside. Brown, tough catch, kicks it. Extra feed for Bell. Got it! That's when you talk about rotation. You pass up a good shot for a bad shot. That last time, it started with Copeland. Copeland didn't force anything. Gets the ball out of his hands. You get a wide open three. Wait, oh, see, nice. Exploding oh, the man. Poor guy that has been fine. It hasn't really been able to score. That's the way to get it going. Reeves just has a rip and goes straight to the bucket. was looking for a foul, didn't get it. And a lengthy stretch of uninterrupted basketball, and we're not complaining. Miles Kelly in oh, rhythm. That's a nice rhythm. You caught him again. We talked about Miles Kelly. He's got a chance to get going, you can tell. Zion Williamson's Duke freshman scoring record today. 35 points for the Blue Devils in Tallahassee, and they were playing without Tyrese Proctor, so he stepped up. Georgia Tech has its first lead of the game after the last Miles Kelly three. Mintz circles the wagons. Copeland fakes it, takes it. Oh, man. Makes but hold on, but did you see him put it through his legs first? I mean, and I thought we talked with Adrian Archer. We talked about Copeland. This is a guy that pretty much plays with swag, and there's a lot of things. That last move was unbelievable. He's got style, that's for sure. And he's also got one foul. As he bumps Kelly on the way to the rim. Yeah, but check it out first. I mean, okay, watch. He's it. He puts the ball through his leg, and he goes and gives you a little bit of a finger roll there. I mean, I love watching him play because he just plays with swag. I, I love it. This is a guy that's plays with a chip on the show. Yeah, Scott, Red Autry. Just, I want to ask you about Quadir Copeland. He just starts giggling. <laughs> like, he's just that type of guy. He crashed, crashed Red's press conference after the Carolina win on Tuesday night. Contested corner three won't go. Battle for the rebound. Tipped and controlled by Syracuse.
Mintz has started two of five from the floor. Starling's two for three. This is Chris Bell. Whoa. And it's followed by Kyle Cuff Jr. And, and if you're Damon Stoudemire, you have to be frustrated because, again, you play solid defense and then you give up a, 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 run, a run at the rim for a guy to finish. You see great defense again by Chris Bell. Hughes on a little bit of a run. Foul's going on Reeves. We talked about for Syracuse getting in transition and them getting in transition is not so much always to get the fast break. It's to get into their early offense. They've got guys that are dynamic that can go upstairs. Georgia Tech, for the most part, has done a good job, but they have to turn and rebound because you've got guys that are coming and crashing offensive glass. And that was what Damon Stoudemire felt. Tossed the Jackets in South Bend. The steal for Sturdivant and the score. What have we seen in this first half, Evans, that in half court, Georgia Tech hasn't really had a chance to really get a lot. But when they can get deflections, they can get steals, and get in that early offense, they put a lot of pressure on Syracuse in this first half. No doubt about it. Mintz first Sturdivant. Foul on Kyle. His first. And, and here's the thing. We talked about Mintz and his ability to be able to score. He puts a lot of pressure on just defenses because this is a guy that can basically penetrate. You saw him create shots, and it's hard. For Georgia Tech, at some point, they're going to have to send multiple I think they're built for, for doing a lot of things in the tournament. We apologize for what we understand. We just learned with technical difficulties. Brian and I have had a good seat courtside. We're fortunate. We apologize and hopefully no more issues the rest of the night. Been an entertaining first 13 minutes, Brian. Syracuse shooting 40% from the floor. And uh, second personal foul going against Chris Bell. So Taylor comes back off the orange bench. Yeah. For Georgia Tech, Dongo's the guy for me that's got to get going. Um, he's had some really good games, you know, has come up short. Syracuse is doing a good job of limiting his touches and his ability to get to the cup. Here's the 2-3 zone that we've got used to seeing over the past four decades. Dongo on the offensive glass, that's what you're talking about? And, and that's where he's at his best because he's a high-energy guy. You know, he's long, athletic, and, and being able to get going is definitely going to give Damon Stoudemire an inside presence, something that they desperately need. Six points for the freshman Dongo. A.J. Starling started hot, hit a couple threes in the opening minutes. Hasn't scored since then. This is Quadir Copeland. Rebound for Gapari. Here comes Sturdivant. Orange back in the 2-3. You've got to attack that middle part of the zone. Entering tonight, according to Synergy, the stat tracking software, Syracuse has played zone less than 20% of the time this year. But over the past three games, it has been much more prevalent. But watch the, but the collapse that last time when Dungle got the ball, there were three guys around him. Vince thought about the three, gives it up to Taylor. Orange coaching staff wanted their team to move. They did not move it up, and it's George Tech ball. But here's the thing is that when Judah Miss gets the ball, there are three Georgia Tech defenders. You've got the on-ball player, and then they're surrounding him right now. You see the officials confirming Georgia Tech ball. If you're Syracuse, you've got to make that ball pop because Georgia Tech is literally sitting down. J.J. Starling is another weapon. If you're Judah Mintz, you go ahead and allow him to get cooking. It's going to free it up for you later. Damon Stoudemire said yesterday, you know, we're going to be in position to win the game against Syracuse. We just have to go do it. And that's what you've seen with this Georgia Tech team. They've had six games where they've been up plus five and multiple occasions lost the game. They have those lows of scoring droughts where when you put it, they get a little bored with doing what's been working. How's going on, Cuse? 
Taylor battling for position inside with Dongo. And yeah, that's what Dongo lets you see, feel his presence. Number two on Justin Taylor. A and that's an opportunity where if you're Justin Taylor, you got to get in front of Dongo. You don't want to give him those offensive rebounds and the putbacks. By Dongo, currently fourth in the nation among freshmen in rebounds per game. Number two in the nation among freshmen in field goal percentage. It is astonishing, thinking about it after the fact, that Georgia Tech beat North Carolina here, mostly without Dongo. Remember, he collided with Harrison Ingram's knee less than five minutes into the game. But the thing that, that during that game, it was a level of con a consistency on both sides of the floor. What you're seeing for Georgia Tech right now is they're up 22-21. A lot of that is their ability to be able to limit the Syracuse team from getting to the pace, to the paint. Against Carolina, Syracuse was able to break them down. Georgia Tech in the first half is doing a better job of doing that. Hintz gets underneath, loops it back out, Starling. Hintz driving on Kapari. Pretty good defense by Tafara. Walks down at three. Taylor needs to fire. Good defensive rebounding there. Both Dongo and George attack. And the other end looking high. A foul before the follow. Kapari will get free. Is stay in front and not have to force weak side help. It's really been something that's helped him this first half. Is that a gadoosh? Skadoosh. Skadoosh. You got it. For folks who haven't watched Tafara Gapari this year, he is an unreal athlete. Sophomore from New Zealand. Parents moved from Zimbabwe to New Zealand right before he was born. And he's got oodles of potential. That's and a technical term, by the way. And if you're Syracuse, you see Georgia Tech mix, mixing it up. You see the shot by Judah Mintz. That's a little bit of a bailout. I feel like you got to try to move that zone, get into those gaps, and force the help and then pass the shot. You see, see Copeland being able to finish that shot. He's, he's a fun player to watch. Plays with a lot of emotion. Yep. He's got style. And he's got four points. Make it five points now for Quadir. Somehow that pass got all the way through to Gapari. But it was almost automatic. Dongo had it in his mind before he got it. He was passing to Gapari. It was just that Taylor fell down. But Georgia Tech has done a better job of understanding against this zone. Get inside the middle of it, force the help, and you get good things have happened for them. Taylor passes up the shot. Mintz does not. Front iron, no good. Rebound Kelly. Gapari to the basket. Oh, wow. Talk about the athleticism in the lane. How about Gapari right there again? Georgia Tech obviously made his first two threes, and he missed his heat check. He's only taken one field goal attempt, though, in the last 15 minutes or so. And, and that's the guy that I think that they need to get going. If you can get him rolling again, then that's going to open up for Judah Mintz. Georgia Tech is focused on him. But you know, J.J. Starling is that guy, too. You got to get him going. You see a nice move by, by Copeland. Could, came up short on that one. Tremendous quickness with Quadir unable to convert at the cup. Kelly, rise and fire for three. And see again, Georgia Tech getting early offense. Kapari realizing you got a wide open Miles Kelly. We talked about Kelly needs to show up. And I like the fact this first half is let the game come to him. It's knocked down some timely shots. 7-0 run over the last minute. Drought continues for Syracuse. Taylor comes up short. Good start today for Justin. He's 0 for 4. Steal for Syracuse. Starling, the theft and the finish plus the foul. That's exactly what the Orange needed. And, and again, Starling, we talked about him, Evans, as he's one of those guys that if you allow him to get into open transition, active hands by uh, Starling to get out, and then watch. Just gets downhill. You see Reeves not set. 
He's able to gather himself, absorb the contact, and the finish. Opportunity to get the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Brian, one of the ACC's good writers, Luke DeCock of the Raleigh News and Observer, wrote a piece today about how fewer offensive fouls have been called this year compared to last year. The last season, there was about 3.7 offensive fouls per game. This year, it's down to 2.2. It's a drastic drop, and it's all because of the rule change with the, with the officials calling that block charge differently. And that, I think that was a situation that last year might have been a charge. Absolutely. Dongo has it poked away. And the foul's on George, who undercut the hustling mints. They both took a beating on that one, though. But how many times have we seen Syracuse and their active hands be able to come up and steal the ball? This last time, you see, again, George goes for that ball, comes up with the foul. But the energy from the Syracuse bigs and their guards, I think that's allowing them to be able to get back. And Georgia Tech has done a good job of being able to maintain this lead. One and one for Mintz. By the way, George just picked up his second personal foul with 2.17 to go. Those are costly. He's missed front ends. George staying in the game with two fouls. Bad pass looking for Dongo. Yeah, if you're Kapari, you cannot turn that over. You have to swing that ball. Copeland again trying to be a showman. Hits the bottom of the backboard. Georgia Tech with numbers. Now Copeland just now getting back into the play. If you're Dongo, when you get that ball at the free throw line, you've got to be careful when you get that again. It looked to be almost three consecutive turnovers. My goodness, Dongo just threw an outlet pass to start the fast break. And Mix lays it in. Timeout, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech. Judah Mintz within 12 points of 1,000. And Damon Stoudemire has had that look of disgust on his face too often lately for Georgia Tech fans. Guys, to stay wide, anytime that that ball gets inside, we're, we're scrapping at it. We want to go ahead and have the active hands because Georgia Tech has shown that they will turn it over. If I'm Damon Stoudemire, I tell my guys to be patient. Do not try to hit the home run. Let that ball move, let's shift that Syracuse zone, and ball security, value the basketball, because you literally have allowed Syracuse to get back in the game with your own turnovers. Brian, as a Georgia Tech guy, and this is the first Georgia Tech game you've called this year, curious to get your general thoughts on Damon Stoudemire. What was your reaction when he was hired? How well did you know him before he took this job? So I had known Damon for some time before because just in, you know, the inner circle of being an ex-NBA guy and you come across, I thought it was an amazing hire because, again, I knew that he, uh, the type of staff he would bring in here, and then obviously the recruiting, being able to recruit the uh, Georgia inner metro Atlanta area, bringing the talent in would be great. You see, again, Judah Mintz ooh, ooh, getting downhill. Talking about a guy that puts a lot of pressure, but back to the point, I thought they've had done some really good things. Obviously, in year one, we talked about the fact that it takes time. You know, with the transport por por uh, portal, it allows you to get good early. Um, but then they, they've done some good things, and they've come up short. That you see Georgia Tech coming up empty-handed again. This is one of those droughts that have plagued the Jackets lately. 7-0 run. Would have been a 10-0 run if Bell could have hit that shot. And, and even though Georgia Tech is still up two, I feel like there's a shift in the momentum. It feels like Syracuse has basically gotten a little momentum going here, but Georgia Tech has got to get an easy bucket. That'll work. But here's the thing, you saw Gabari get it. He took his time. No one came to him, and he knocked down a simple shot. Stick with what's guiding you here. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Your Georgia Tech stay solid. But if you're Syracuse, continue to move that ball, attack the gaps, and put pressure on their perimeter. Despite nine turnovers, Georgia Tech leads by four. Final five seconds of the half. Starling airmails one. And that's the end of the opening stanza here at McCamish. Orange jumped in front 19 years ago. Georgia Tech played its first basketball game. They lost to Auburn, but they bounced back with two wins over Georgia. And what at the time was just 
moderately hate clean old fashioned. Yeah, there wasn't as much hate. I was, I was gonna say before you decide to try to be funny, no, I did not play in that game. Do not ask me how many points did I score those three games. You were at the game. Ah, nice try. Nice try. Hey, coming start in the half, I've always looked at the second half as the first five minutes. And if I'm Syracuse, if I'm, if I'm Adrian Alter, I tell my guys, hey, we got to try to get downhill. Even though Georgia Tech's playing the zone, we don't want to settle. As you see, Judah Mintz go right back in and absorb the contact. Good three for 17. And then if I'm Damon Stoudemire, I tell my guys, we want to continue to attack the paint, and we have to value the basketball. Nine turnovers is way too many. Eight points in the first half for Judah Mintz. He's currently 10 shy of 1,000 in his Syracuse career. Skadoosh. Free throw is good, or as Poe from the new wow. movie Kung Fu Panda 4 might say, Skadoosh. Don't miss Kung Fu Panda 4. Only in theaters March 8th. Hey, you know, next time I play a little pickup basketball, every time I score, I'm going to start yelling that out. Skadoosh. In your face, Skadoosh. That could be your new tagline. You know what? Hey. Do you know Kung Fu? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I'm not convinced. <laughs> so look, Georgia Tech ha had a first half that you could say was a microcosm of the season. They were down, they were up, they were sloppy, they were exciting. And they come up empty on the first trip of the second half as Dongo picks up the foul. Good news is it's only his first. Well, and going back to Georgia Tech is that they have to make sure that they do not create their own issues because, again, this is a team that has shown that they will have lulls where they won't value the basketball. They'll get outside of what they normally do. Against the Syracuse team, you're going to have to be very consistent. And if you see that move by J.J. Starlin, you see two times Starlin being able to get downhill to his right hand. That is by design. And if you're Georgia Tech, you've got to force him to another direction, get him to his weak hand. Some kind iron there helping out J.J. Starling on that runner. Kickball will keep it to Georgia Tech. Jackson called for three fouls in the first minute of the second half. Does that matter? No, here's the thing. is, I, I, You want them to be aggressive. And, and the zone and going back and forth, you just got to stay solid. But Syracuse, again, we've talked about their perimeter guys. They're going to put a lot of pressure on you to stay in front. By Dongo. Scores. Nice. What a move. And that was a tough two because Dongo was able to put the ball on the floor. We talked in the first half. Georgia Tech's going to need his production. He's going to have to put his head down and attack the bucket. Taylor did not score in the first half. That's the way he wanted to get the second half started. But here's the thing. You saw that last time. Taylor not settling for the outside shot that Georgia Tech is giving him. He's trying to close that gap and get to the bucket. Second foul on Judah Mintz. Kelly, nine points in the first half, all from beyond the arc. Looking for three more. Rebound pulled down by Reeves. Sturdivant. Yeah, if you're Kyle Sturdivant, you got to shoot that shot. Yes, he did. There were two guys, and one guy was guarding two. Trying to be a little cute, threw it into the defense. Taylor feeling it. Or not. Seventh rebound for Miles Kelly. Syracuse bench wanted to travel. They might have a case, but Kowasi Reeves scores. And Reeves doing a good job of being able to attack the paint and then getting that separation. Again, you don't want to settle. Did you see a travel there on the I catch? did. I, I saw a little, a little Texas two-step going on. <laughs> Taylor, not shy, comes up short again. Sturdivant the rebound. This time he takes it. Miss fires. Georgia Tech's getting some half decent looks here. Three minutes gone, second half. Mint step back. All of a sudden, both teams have gone cold. Well, and, and you look at the shot call that last time, if you drew the mince, that's the shot that you want. Adrian Archer can't be upset about that. But if you're Georgia Tech, you got to continue to move the ball in your spacing. 
Kelly to Dongo. Off balance. If I'm Dongo, bring the ball down, gather yourself. You don't need to make the highlight play. Weird vibe to this game right now. Tied at 36. Mintz, nope. Apari the rebound. And if you're Judah Mintz, you have to make sure that you stay on balance. Just because you get a chance to get that shot up, does that mean that that's a good shot? And so, again, whichever team can stick to being disciplined with their looks and running their sets, is probably going to be able to expand this lead. That's a huge shot for Kyle Sturdivant. And, and it was, because again, I still thought it was a contested shot, but then when you, you Kyle Sturdivant, he was able to come up that pick and roll and get a good look at it and then basically finish it. If you're Syracuse, you gotta find a way to continue to get downhill. Mince's turn. Gives it up for JJ. Starling can't connect, rebound Dongo. All of a sudden, Georgia Tech back up by five. Oh, nice, nice pass. pass. Kelly lays it nice in. Nice pass, good back door by, by Kelly. Good dive by Kyle Sturdivant. That was pretty. Kelly in the double. Better job of being able to get some shots to go. I mean, the only offense for Syracuse has been J.J. Starling and Judah Mintz. Uh, the zone, it seems, has slowed them down a little bit. But as you know, see, you see Starling get downhill. Georgia Tech is doing a better job of taking care of the ball. You see Syracuse falling back in that zone. Georgia Tech can close out the first half. Did a better job of being able to get the ball inside and capitalize on that. You don't want to stay just east and west and end up throwing up a three-point shot. Sturdivant shooting over Malik Brown gets it to go. But did you see that Sturdivant call for that pick? And so by calling for a pick, it allowed him to touch the paint and basically get a better shot. Again, if you're Syracuse, you have to step up. And again, this zone that Georgia Tech is playing, they got to find a way you see the penetration and finish by Judah Mintz. That snaps the 9-0 run for Georgia Tech. Mintz now within 6 of 1,000. 58th game of Mintz's career. Only five players in Syracuse all time have reached 1,000 points in fewer games than Judah if he can get there today. It's a pretty illustrious list. Time out on the floor, 14 minutes to go. Now in that coveted ninth spot, which means they wouldn't have to play on Tuesday in D.C. They advance to the second round and play the 8-9 matchup to start Wednesday. Clock winding down. Reeves can't connect. Rebound Brown. Hey, good defensive possession by Syracuse. Kyle Sturvin wanted to come off. And you saw not being able to get any clearance. You're Syracuse, you gotta find a way to chip away at this lead. Mintz likely to be a guy who'll be involved in that process. Copeland unable to finish. Georgia Tech's doing a pretty good job defensively in the interior. Defending without fouling is that they're doing a good job of staying one, one man in front of the ball. That would have given Georgia Tech its largest lead of the night, but Sturdivant was off the mark. Mintz again comes up short. Rebound ripped away by Sacco. And you're seeing some of those shots that failed in the first half with Judah Mintz coming up a little short for him in the second half. Kelly takes it. Rebound tipped by Reeves, but Mintz has it. One on two and a foul. Wave off the basket. You see Coach Adrian Autry lobbying for the and one. Watch this last play again. If you're Syracuse, you want to get downhill. You the men's realize he's got Kyle Sturdivant. You know, it's a good thing I'm sitting here next to you because for me, the foul was called. And he gathered. Not sure why he wouldn't give him the and one in the continuation on that one. 
Gouda's good, but he's not Trey Young. <laughs> By the way, who you got tonight in the uh, the Steph versus Sabrina three-point shootout? Hey, man, I'm go I love Steph, but I'm going with Sabrina and Eskew. Really? I just, my gut tells me she's got that swag. I think Steph has got the pressure, but she is amazing. I, I'm, I'm serious. I really feel like... She she's gonna go first and she's gonna put the pressure on step Excited to watch it later this evening Copeland Unable to connect Syracuse has gone ice cold here. They're one for their last ten But here's the thing is that Georgia Tech is forcing them into two tough twos and then Syracuse still has not found a rhythm behind the arc Claude got poked in the eye able to get it back out Claude feeling good enough to get the ball inside and he's bumped it's on Bell. It's, no, they're giving it to Copeland. Quadir now has three. So one of the things, Evan, that Georgia Tech has done in the second half against the sec Syracuse zone is that they've been able to get inside that zone. That last time you saw getting the ball right in the Sacco, and then he found Claude on that low baseline. Georgia Tech has got to continue to do that. Nate George has not scored in this game. And Georgia Tech has turned it over a bunch. Oh, and they're wow. still... Up by 10 in the second half. And the guy who's giving them the shot of offense off the bench is Kyle Sturdivant. That last time could have gotten into the paint, had a step back. That shows me a guy that's actually in a nice rhythm is filling it. There's some Syracuse fans out there who are thinking, oh, this is predictable. Yes, of course, we're going to beat North Carolina at home and then lose to one of the bottom teams in the ACC. The nature of college basketball, it ebbs and flows. That's what makes the great teams great, being able to produce consistently, game in, game out. Can the Orange dig themselves out of a hole on the road? Jackets lead by 10. I mean, I, I got your back, bro. I know she's going to be watching that. Great to see your wife and daughter here at the game today. Big Georgia Tech fans. Yeah, my daughter is a eighth grader, and she's gotten more into watching basketball and men's and women's. And so you look right now, Georgia Tech on the 12th to two run. You and her will be watching women's basketball at noon tomorrow in the Absolutely CW. Absolutely will. Jackets Wolf Pack up in Raleigh. Syracuse two at the line for Copeland. Interesting going to break there. We saw Copeland and Mintz conversing somewhat aggressively. Somehow that layup didn't go in, but another chance. Sturdivant would have been a big bucket. Well, the rebound finds Brown and loops it ahead. Starling all the way, and it's a six-point game. And, and great for the Syracuse Orange because, again, up until then, they had been struggling only 25%, four for 13 in this second half. They've got to be able to generate some early offense and get that rhythm going. We were talking about it with Red Autry before the game, though. To some outside perspectives, it may have looked like the players were jawing at each other or arguing, but that's Coach Autry's imprint on the program. He wants guys to be aggressive and have that sort of fiery style. Yeah, he encourages them to be interactive because, again, when you see him, I remember him back when he was a player. He was a guy that played with a chip, and you see he's animated. He wants to have the conversations. He wants his guys to be able to have input. But right now, they've got to find a way to continue to get back in this game. Down only six because Georgia Tech has not been shooting the lights out of it. Find a way because now Georgia Tech's in that man-to-man -man zone. Get downhill. you got two guys, or actually three on the floor, that could go get a bucket. Georgia Tech, after getting out rebounded by nine in South Bend on Wednesday, has a plus 13 edge on the glass today. J.J. Starling again comes up short. Second chance, Starling scores. 6-0 run for Cuse. And, and that's what it is, is that you get the second chance opportunities between Copeland, Mintz, and also Starling. You've got three guys on the perimeter that can put the ball on the floor and attack and make Georgia Tech pay. Oh, wide open underneath. Easiest two of the season for Dongo. And, and great recognition by Gapari. He had three guys, rather than trying to force through it, realize he had Dongo wide open by himself under the bucket. Orange just three for 20 from beyond the arc. They're 
14 for 28 from two. Clear 50%. That's a good look. And great recognition, Evan, by J.J. Starling. He realized when he turned the corner, the big from Georgia Tech didn't commit. You're able to get close. Nice little runner. I would continue to try to milk that as long as Georgia Tech stays in that man-to-man. -man. And Kapari missed a great opportunity down low. And Georgia Tech's had a lot of success with getting that high, that high man right there and then getting the ball down low. Kapari, you got to shoot that ball on the knee. Carter Murphy stepped out of bounds, his first action of the night. Here's the thing for Syracuse, you space Georgia Tech out, and then you go and you go right at them and get downhill. Oakland almost lost it, but maintains possession. Here's Bell, turned away. Nine minutes to go in the game. Bell takes it, air ball. Three for 21 from deep. Not sure if that was the shot that Adrian Altry wanted. I thought if you're Bill, you could have gotten by the man and gotten to the cup. Kelly. Ripped down by Bell, but poked away and stolen by Gapari. Blocker charge. How about either? Oh, wow. Gapari scores. Perhaps allowing him to play because, again, Gapari basically went on and was able to avoid the charge. Gapari, the fourth. Yellow Jacket into double figures. Mince probing. Copeland baseline. Three up fakes and around the rim and in. Yeah, there's two opportunities where the refs decide to keep the whistle in their, in their pocket. They're allowing both teams to be able to play. Copeland did a good job of being able to absorb that contact and finish. Copeland averaging double figures in conference play. He's got nine today. Under eight minutes. Kelly from the corner. Dongo has done an unbelievable job on the glass today. And Georgia Tech convert another second chance opportunity. Shot clock winding down. Sertiment gets it to Kelly. Another try. Dongo keeps it alive again. Dongo and Gapari for Georgia Tech are dominating the glass. And a foul is going against Syracuse. The feeling of frustration for the Orisific life. You can revisit our keys to the game in the process, Brian. Yeah, one of the things for Syracuse was attack the paint. And right now you see 28 points in the paint for Syracuse. They've shown that they, when they can get past Georgia Tech and put pressure and get downhill, they've been success, successful. But for Georgia Tech, the guy that's come in has been huge for them. Off the bench is Kyle Sturdivant. Today already 13 points, 5 for 12. I think it's been his shot-making ability, especially shooting from downtown, that's really helped them extend this lead and maintain it. Sturdivant scored single digits in his last four games after he had been really hot in the previous five. Sturdivant, 13 points off the bench, one of four jackets and double figures. Eight rebounds apiece for Dongo and Kelly. Kapari has seven boards. Kapari from the elbow, rebounded by Copeland. But that's a shot he's got to take. You've you got to be able to get the ball inside, and you can't get bored with what's been broken. Syracuse playing that zone, you're able to get into the, the teeth of it. Again, a Syracuse again. Look at the mismatches, good pass by Copeland. And they've been able to do that. You run that pick and roll, and then you get the dump off. That's what's been working for you. Malik Brown, just his second basket of the game, only a second field goal attempt. Knocked away by Brown. Orange with a chance to tie. Cuff. That was goaltending. 52 all. This is what we saw the, the first part of the first half. Syracuse was able to play that zone, active hands, get those steals, get out in transition. And you see right here, you see Cuff go up, and it looks like right there, Dungo touches the ball, gets his hand on it. Official signal that they're going to take a look at it during the next break, but clearly a goaltend, and it should be 52 all. Ball security has got to be huge for Dungo when he gets that ball right around the free throw line. Because, again, once he gets it, then you know that Syracuse is coming up there. 
for a big, you have to make a quick decision. Even you're putting the ball on the floor, you're making a pass, but you cannot sit there and play with it. Syracuse is way too active right now. Dongo gets the bounce. But, but you see what just happened. He basically realized, as soon as I get it, I've got to make a play. He turned around because, again, you have Malik Brown that's basically a couple of feet off of him. We basically got a six-minute basketball game here in Atlanta. Syracuse and Georgia Tech. Copeland kicks it. Corner three is good for Chris Bell. And the play was set up by Copeland because, again, he was able to get down and break down the defense, caught everyone, focused on him, good cross pass to get that wide open corner three. Reaching foul against Brown. Yeah, I still say with Dungo, when you catch that ball, that ball. Off the bracket, long outlet pass was dangerous from the moment it left the thrower's hands. A heady play by Kyle Sturdivant. You run your offense, get your set. Last thing you do when you want to throw up something is, oh my gosh. Speaking of throwing up something, that was something. Yeah, and, and if you're Nathan George, you don't want to go for a home run play. Again, Sacco is not a guy that's going to go ahead and play a, above the rim like that. Damon Stoudemire with a coach of teams in there that can definitely go to the Final Four. A ton of talent in the lead. For the Orange, it's a 17-6 run over the last six-plus minutes. Quick catch and shoot. Almost wedged in there. Sacco pulls down the rebound. Here comes Sturdivant. Through the Dongo screen, Sturdivant for three. Got Why it. not? Why not, Kyle Sturdivant? You pass under. Does it talk about a guy that's taking advantage of the moment? Kyle Sturdivant has come in, knocking down those threes. Average fewer than five points per game in his last four, but he's got 16 today, 11 since halftime. Copeland shovels it inside. That's the 17th foul on Georgia Tech. And, and watch Kyle Sturvin basically when he realizes that you pass under. D Dongo does a good job of being able to set that pick, and he shoots that three. Already 16 points. We talked about a Georgia Tech team that sometimes struggles to find points, but they've done a good job so far this afternoon. Four guys in double digits, and you got a guy in Kyle Sturdivant comes off the bench with 16. Remember in the first half, Judah Mintz missed the front end of a one-on-one. This is the same situation here from Malik Brown. Not, not quite a squadouche. Battles it in. But I'm, I'm going to give him a, a squadouche. You are all in on the Kung Panda 4 I'm promo. all in on it. I'm all in. And we are tied 57 all. And you and I talked about this. And we thought that this is going to come down, you know, to whoever has the ball game, the ball uh, last. And it's been runs by both teams. Against this 2-3 zone. Kelly for three. Rebounded by Dongo. He missed the layup. Third chance for Georgia Tech as we tick under four minutes. We talked to Adrian Altman. You see it. Kyle, that's a heat check by Kyle Sturdivant. Deep three and the foul on Reeves. Another one and one for Syracuse after the timeout. 354 to go. The orders to win. Interesting to see as you come into the gut of the game, Evan, which team can impose their will for Syracuse. They've had success when they're able to break the tech and get to the paint. But Georgia Tech, that Syracuse zone, if you can get inside that zone, pass up good shots, it gives good things for you. One and one here for Quadir Copeland out of the timeout. One thing that has stood out for Syracuse this year, games decided by 15 or fewer, they're 13 and two. But they've also lost seven times by more than 15 and another missed front end of a one and one for the Orange, it's their second of the day. And those are gut punches. Orange back in the two, three. I think it interesting that Adrian Autry has decided to go into the zone. You know, in the good of the game because they've had success. Georgia Tech got a lot of rebounds, second chances against the zone. Sturdivant 
Hangs in the air, gets it to Claude, oh, who missed the layup. Dongo and Claude now battling each other. Two other orange there as well. It's a jump ball. And that's a bunny. If you're Claude, you got to finish that down there. But again, Adrian Altry talked about the thing that's really important for them is rebounding. I think Damon Stoudemire just got a new piece of gum. <laughs> Georgia Tech is 8 for 17 on layups. Another chance. Up and under. Oh, wow. Count it. Dungo. And, and here's the thing. One of the things that's worked for Georgia Tech against that zone is you get it right there at the free throw line. You force the bigs to have to come up. That backside guy, Dongo. Watch the fact. Dongo gets the ball, gathers himself, absorbs that contact from Copeland, is able to finish. Georgia Tech has done a good job of that. Four fouls on Cordier Copeland. Dongo unable to complete the three-point play. Rebound tapped out, controlled by Mintz. You talked about the fact that close games favor for Syracuse at 13-2. and, 12 and two. It's because they've got guys in Judah Mintz and a guy like Copeland that can finish because they've got guys that you can throw the ball to can tell them to go get you a bucket. Back outside, cop. No good. If you're Georgia Tech, possessions are everything. You want to go with what's working. Again, against this zone, you've had success in getting the ball in the middle, and you force it to go inside out. Miles Kelly is a guy that they desperately need to be able to make up shot because he has been a little absent as of late. Wacy Reeves comes up short. Long rebound. Tracked down by the shooter. And if you're Syracuse, you've got to go and get those. It's gang rebound. You've got to go and lock down those defensive rebounds. They played zone so sparingly this year. Crunch time moments. Loose ball scooped up by Mintz. Cuff is all alone. Sterling Whoa. joins him and meets him at the rim. But a foul was called. You see Cuff would look like he was going to go upstairs to the upper room. And Kyle Sturdivant told him, not so fast again. You say, well, it looked like a breakaway dunk. How about Kyle Sturdivant comes back, gets a piece of it. And again, watch that replay. That's a foul. That's a foul because he got him with the body. He may have gotten a little ball, but it's clear that he was in contact with the body. That's number four on Sturdivant. Free throw good, or as Poe from the new movie Kung Fu Panda 4 might say, Skadoosh! Don't miss Kung Fu Panda 4, only in theaters March 8th. For the tie. No. Hughes, 10 of 15 from the line. That includes two missed front ends of one and ones. Under two minutes in a one point game. Dongo had it poked away. It's Georgia Tech ball. 14 to shoot. Under two minutes, they can review it. So everybody can take a deep breath and grab a Snickers. <laughs> And the bigs from Georgia Tech, they've got to have ball security because every time that ball goes around, Syracuse. So I'm looking at Georgia Tech playing man-to-man. -man. And if I'm Adrian Autry, I continue to spread them out because you've got a guy in Judah Mintz, J.J. Starling, that can easily get by the Tech defenders. Pretty good defense by Dongo. Copeland, he's an adventure. Ten to shoot. Starling. Pretty good defense that from was the solid, Jackets. Solid defense by Miles Kelly because, again, you want to stay solid and force him in the contested shot that last time Starling was able to get there, but then you force him to shoot over a contested. Reeves. Doesn't get the bounce. Closing in in a minute to play in a one-point game. Orange only have one timeout left. Any Georgia Tech foul would be two shots. Mintz puts it up. And he has just not gotten the bounce today, but the foul is on Malik Brown. That last shot by Judah Mintz, uh, again, 
Georgia Tech is forcing him to his offhand. If I'm Adrian Autry, I try to see if he can get down. And you see this last foul here. You see Kapari comes up with it. And that last time, it looked like Malik Brown reached in there and made it the foul. And one thing Georgia Tech's done well is they haven't sent Judah Mintz to the free throw line. They have not. He's and that's two for three from the line. Big possession for Georgia Tech. If you can get the ball inside without turning it over. If you're Syracuse, you want to stay solid. As soon as that ball goes in, you want to have active hands, and you got to lock up a rebound. Jackets by one. Final minute. 12 in the shot clock. Sturdivant has had the hot hand. Finds Kelly with a left hand. Oh, Plus the nice. foul. Miles Kelly. And that was the guy you need to make a play. I thought that play was set up by penetration by Kyle Sturdivant. Watch the little runner. You see Coles up at the left. You see Malik Brown come over. Was able to absorb the contact. And flex on him. Brian, let me tell you, Miles Kelly is channeling his inner dragon warrior. And yes, that is part of the Kung Fu Panda 4 promo. Oh. Only in theaters, March 8th. Malik Brown just fouled out. Glad for the first time today, Munir Hima is entering the game with 35 point 31.5 seconds left. So here's the thing, Georgia Tech already up by three. Important for Kelly to make this because now what you're doing is making it a two possession ball game for 31 seconds. If you're Syracuse, you, if he does miss it, you box out and you've got to secure this rebound. That's a big Scott, Scott douche, douche for Miles Kelly. Four point lead for Georgia Tech. Mince to the basket. And Dongo called for the foul. Yeah, good move by love the decision by Judah Mintz to try to get downtown but that down downhill because now what you do is you go to the free throw line get a chance to get two points and still stop the clock Judah Mintz hasn't gotten the line a ton but he's still drawn seven fouls today Two for three from the strike. These are significant. Now the advantage Syracuse has, they got 17 fouls. So the next two times they foul Georgia Tech, it's one and one. That puts more pressure on the shooter. Well, and, and here's the thing, is that assuming that Judah Mintz is gonna make this, make this shot, if you're Georgia Tech, you have to be careful with the basketball because Syracuse has guys that are active. 62 to 60. Your Syracuse, you don't have to foul immediately. What you try to do is you force the ball to go into the corners, try to get Georgia taken into some type of trap. They're trapped. Sturdivant right in front of the Syracuse bench, and a foul's called. They had Kyle Sturdivant where they wanted him. Not sure who the foul was. And again, you talk about right there. Active hands, not sure. Yeah, you see the reach in right there. Back Copeland with the left hand. Watch right here. You have him where you want. Copeland's going to go ahead and body him. And there's that left hand right there. Got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. That's his fifth. Nine points, three rebounds, two assists, and 30 minutes off the bench for Quadir Copeland. Georgia Tech will shoot a one and one. It'll be Sturdivant. His first free throws of the day. He's 88% from the line this season. And this is a one and one for number one. Yeah, big free throw. And again, for, this, for Georgia Tech, Kyle Sturdivant has been the one that's carried this ball club in the second half with the shot making. Your Damon Stoudemire, this is a guy that shoots 88% from the free throw line. One for two, but the rebound for Dongo. He had it, and he lost it, and it's in the corner. Georgia Tech's got it. 
And Miles Kelly will now shoot one and one. Syracuse got the miss they needed, Brian. And yeah, that was the miss they needed. We talked again. You have to lock up that free throw, excuse me, the rebound. And again, you get the miss that you want. And then Dongo comes up with that offensive rebound, keeps it live. Frustration for Adrian Autry. Again, you're still only down three. Georgia Tech still has to make these free throws. You still have 18 seconds left to go in the game. Big time hustle from Dongo. Kelly, one and one, four point game. Timeout, Damon Stoudemire. 18.1 left in a five point game. And Syracuse, if you think they need a three, that has not. Jackets 10 of 12 from the line today. And Evan, if you're Georgia Tech, you see them extending. You do not want to give Syracuse an easy run. You want to force them to take some time off the clock. Mintz to Starling. Back to Mintz. Open three. Missed it. Dunko rebounds. Falls to the ground. See, Dungo, they, they call a foul they or a travel. Call, they call it a travel. Dungo fall. His teammate bit. knocked him over. A little friendly fire. So Syracuse still clinging to the flickering life they've got tonight. Lee Cassell cleans off the game ball. Syracuse just needs a basket immediately. Orange do have one timeout. Starling for two. Nope. That shot has not been there all night, and Georgia Tech is victorious because of it. Jack is winning 65 to 60. Damon Stoudemire's team gets off the schneider.